Welcome to Brands Decoded podcast, where we speak with some of the best founders crafting the next generation of brands. I'm Rahul from Times Internet, where we back consumer internet companies. Hi, I'm Zoeb from Sauce VC that backs early stage consumer brands. We came together to build the Brands Decoded community where members eat, drink, sleep, and craft brands. Our guest today is Shashank Mehta, a man who searched far and wide to understand what it means to be healthy. He started a blog called Fitshit to share his learnings from that journey. Today, he continues this mission as founder of The Whole Truth. Pleasure to have you with us today, Shashank. Awesome. Lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. So yeah, to start off, uh, let's talk a bit about your background, Shashank. I believe you've worked in the FMCG sector. Can you elaborate a bit on how the experiences in that sector help you craft the whole truth? Sure. So actually, the whole truth is kind of the culmination of both my professional and personal journey. So I'll touch upon both. Uh, professionally, fairly boring, standard journey up to a point, engineer, MBA right after that, uh, right out of campus joined Unilever that's 2009 and then did uh, Unilever for three years in 2012 left Unilever that's where it started becoming interesting I left Unilever when I was doing really well uh, and joined uh, Fasos at that time which is now Rebel Foods uh, as their first EIR Jadeep had just raised around from Sequoia and he was hiring EIRs Uh, did that for two years uh, came back to Unilever uh, in 2014 did Unilever again for five years, this time in more of a brand role capacity. The first stint was more sales. Uh, and then left Unilever again in 2019. So I have the dubious distinction of quitting Unilever twice. Uh, <laughs> I think the HR has a photograph of me that we'll never let this happen. <laughs> so that's the pr- professional journey. So obviously... Uh, Through the Unilever journey, I've seen how marketing uh, operates from uh, the back end, right? So, uh, and I was largely in personal care during my professional life. So I've sold you skin creams and hair care and stuff like that. Uh, But at the same time, there was a a personal journey going on. So when I was 19 years old, uh, just entered college, I was 110 kgs. And then some shit happened, most probably. Uh, my memory eludes me, but most probably it was a girl's rejection. And, and I decided that I'm going to lose weight because that's the reason I'm getting rejected. Uh, and within a year, less than a year, I lost some 40 kgs. I just started running and stopped eating. I went batshit crazy. There was no science to it. Uh, I didn't educate myself. Uh, so I did that, became really happy that now I'm a thin guy. I used to think thin is equal to fit. So I'm not a fit guy. Uh, started eating like the thin folks around me and lo and behold, within two years, all of the weight came back, right? Uh, then I lost it again. Then I again was stupid enough to think it's gone. Then it came came back again. Then I lost it again. So I've done this plus minus 25, 30 kg cycle thrice in life uh, before it got into my thick skull that most probably it's not just me that's being stupid. It's most probably there's something outside uh, which is keeping me from keeping the weight off. That's when I started getting into food and researching what goes into food. Started writing a blog called Fit Shit, uh, which was a side hustle during the Unilever days. Uh, Used to do it over the weekends and that really took off. And that pretty much was the genesis, I would say, of uh, uh, the whole truth. By the way, the parent company is called Fit Shit Health Solutions. It's it's an ode to where it all started. Uh, uh, So yeah, so I think there came a point where I realized that I have a unique insight into what's wrong with food and I have the professional chops to do something about it. So I shouldn't be a bystander and just comment by the sidelines. Uh, Better throw my hat in the ring and see whether I've really got to make things change. Got it to, you know, change things. And yeah, that's how the company started. Amazing journey, Shashank. Wow. I myself used to be 113 kgs and now in my 80s. So I totally relate to your personal journey as I also realize the importance of food in one's health. I'm sure the blog helped you gain a lot of insights on what problems people face and what they are eating. Wanted to understand how you use those insights from the blog to carve out the products uh, at at The Whole Truth. So I think, uh, unfortunately, the word insight is very aggrandized and abused in the world. Usually, 
when you dive deep into something you start feeling things about that space which others don't feel it it i think starts at a more internal level and when i started fitchit the the simple hypothesis was no one seems to be telling the truth uh and and the thing with the truth is who is to say there's no absolute truth right who is to say what's your truth versus my truth i realized i realized that the definition of truth is i will tell people my truth and uh, and that started resonating massively so that was the biggest insight that people are starved of the un uh, motivated unbiased truth right about their food because people were reading 1500 word articles like that's the minimum length of an article on fitchit uh, in a day and age when i was told that you know instagram is taking off thumb stopping creatives and people don't even look at photographs anymore for 2 seconds uh, people are coming and reading 1500 word articles right uh, so that for me was the biggest uh, insight and didn't happen as an aha moment it happened over time uh, right and then about the bars specifically uh, right bang in the middle of the fitchit journey right at the end of the first year i did a uh, article which was the best and worst protein bars in india by yeah. that time by the way i did not have any inkling that i was ever going to start up i did this article it really took off even today if you search on google it ranks on seo without me having spent a penny behind it uh right so that uh, told me that a this is a category uh, which is being consumed by the most health conscious people uh, in the country right uh, and hence by definition they are the most involved people when it comes to their health uh, this is why this article is taking off that was insight number 1 second i realized that it really doesn't take much Uh, of equipment or machinery etc to make a protein bar all it takes is an oven and a mixer both of which i have in my home so i was like chalo let's try uh, uh, making one and why try making one because this thought this germ of the idea that why isn't there a brand that just talks about its ingredients up front like food should be about ingredients why is food about sexy chocolatey photo shoots and hot women licking some bar of a plane i don't get it like why isn't food about ingredients why are there almonds flying and you know grains <laughs> flying all over the pack when actually in your food you're putting 2% almonds and then you're putting a star mark saying images are for representative purposes only you're not selling a fucking car uh where you know the all the accessories you show are in a higher model but you are you are putting <laughs> price of a lower model that's where this images are for representative purposes only thing started and it made its way into our food why yeah so this thought was always there that can there be a brand which just says hey this is the food this is the ingredients that have gone into my food and there's nothing else yeah and the doubt was maybe it's not been done because it can't be done because shelf life won't happen uh because you know the uh, it nothing would bind it together most of the sugary liquid that we put in food is to bind food uh together so it doesn't break in transit etc right with protein bars it seemed like a very low entry barrier space to try because it didn't require any machinery yeah so i said let's try and see whether it happens or not it took me about 7 8 months i'm no chef right so it took me a lot of trial and error etc and the only uh, rule that i started with was nothing in this i can't put anything in this which i can't proudly declare on the front of pack that's the simple rule which again made it made it easy because hey i don't have access to a chemistry lab from which i can get ingredients i have access only to my kitchen so whatever was there in my kitchen i started putting in a mixy and then uh, it was massive trial and error i have logs and logs in my in my notebook where i'm like this recipe is plus one date this recipe is minus two almonds this recipe is plus two cashews right so because there's no other way to do it like at least i don't know any other way to do it uh and in 7 8 months i at, at my hul colleagues unilever colleagues used to be my guinea pigs every other day they'd know that shashank will bring some crumbly new bar <laughs> and uh 6 7 months in it started getting pretty, pretty decent and my conviction in the fact that this can be done it's not been done because it's not been attempted with this lens uh started getting formed 
and uh, yeah and then then a lot of other serendipitous stuff happened around uh, my bosses uh, uh, the they were the ones they were the first ones i told ki main aisa soch raha hu and they said chhod mat but agar chhodega to we'll put money <laughs> so it was a very clear indicator ki ye to kar lena chahiye so that's how it started amazing thanks for sharing that amazing story shashank and uh, that actually reminds me of a typical concept that we see in startups that is the mvp the minimum viable product you know so the way it goes is that suppose you're solving for transportation before you make a car you make a skateboard that's the mvp so if you transfer this concept to a brand i wanted to ask you how do you make a mvp for a brand or perhaps a mvb i don't think you can do an mvp on a brand what and that's not even the right approach uh so let's scale back to uh what is a uh, so what is a brand and why is it needed in the first place right let's let's go back to first principles on brands so about let's say 2 300 years ago uh there weren't many brands right like you would go to the local if you are in england you'll go to the local butcher local bakery get the bread from there get stuff from there in india you'll go to the local uh, chakki and get your atta and your dal etc right then as industrialization happened people started moving to cities and away from their sources of food we don't even know where our food comes from now right because someone sitting in the outskirts is making the food and we go, they started going to a retail store to buy they were like hey i wish i could identify jacks bread because i used to love jacks bread and they told jack hey why don't you put a logo on your bread so that i can identify mm-hmm. it and i then trust that this bread is great because it comes from jack right that's how brands started right and hence brands the evolution the the primary reason for brands to exist is trust uh and initially they were just a logo and colors etc and then it started evolving 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 to a point where now i think brands stand for trust plus a fundamental human insight yeah so for example uh on surf one of the largest brands in the world the insight is dirt is good yeah so if you see any of their ads when the kids are playing in kichad mm. and then you know the kid says me usse maar dunga ja ke the whole point is don't stop your kids from playing if they get dirty that means they are learning hence dirt is good yeah uh similarly axe is all about attraction nike is about inspiration innocent is about innocence all of these are fundamental human truths yeah which apply at large scale to mostly all people dove is real beauty so they only take real hmm. women in their ads etc right uh so i don't think you can do a brand mvp what you need to do is put down your human insight that your brand will be built on and for us that was the truth the insight was no one likes being lied to that's the one line that i wrote on a piece of paper when i took it to my bosses that the human insight is no one likes being lied to and this insight cuts across male female rich poor old young right you might be the richest guy in the world eating in a five star hotel but if in your bill i incorrectly charge you on one item you will lose your shit it's not about the money you're feeling yeah. cheated no one likes feeling cheated right so so once i had that insight and i knew that i can make a product that lives up to that insight that's mm-hmm. the making of a great brand yeah so i couldn't test it out anymore i couldn't go and ask people do you want brand to be truthful what do you think they <laughs> say right and yet right. we go and buy the shit that we buy because no one's right. given us an option right so that's my answer i don't think you can do an mvp on a brand makes a lot of sense it's interesting that you mentioned earlier that you never wanted to do a startup was it because of your fasos experience and um, how did you actually end up doing it and who were your partners in crime so uh, yes it was the fasos experience because uh, first of all i realized that restaurant operations is a special kind of hell hole uh and i am just not built for it like and, and it took me 2 3 years to accept that i i am not built to do this right because restaurant operations is 24 fucking 7 right you cannot switch off uh what are the world's holidays are your busiest days when the 
when you want to relax with your friends where do you go you go to a restaurant so there's someone standing behind the counter making sure that, that stuff is getting served right so there is absolutely zero time to uh move out think redirect etc and i operate better when i get time to zoom out think strategically where we are heading and then do stuff right and the second thing i realized was the amount of effort and you know heart and soul this is taking the only way i can justify it is if i am in the driver's seat because then if there is a disagreement between me and the founder or where on where this needs to lead of course the founder should win like that it is his baby it should win but then i didn't find it in myself to have uh, that level of heart and soul commitment when i didn't feel in the driver's seat yeah so that's why i left and that's why i said that this is just too much of an emotional tug and emotional drain uh, to do ever again yeah until i came to a point where you know call it serendipity or whatever it was i don't know why i started writing fit shit and what and what happened etc but uh, and by the way on the professional front also the last 3 years of unilever i was busy crafting and launching unilever's first new brand that they had ever made in the last 50 years which is lever ayush otherwise unilever only launch hul mostly launches brands which are which exist in the west and they bring them to india right so i had that experience of crafting a brand and launching it i had fit shit going my own personal experience suddenly it it started making sense again that you know uh, this seems to be ordained uh, that this must be done and it still took me a long while to get over the bias of you know the last experience that am i ready for uh, how much this will take out of me uh, but yeah what what helped me cross the line was there were just too many things which were uh, falling in place and on uh, partners in crime frankly the first most important person who uh who decided to come on board is uh, rachna who heads production for us now uh she's a friend's friend so when i told you after 6 7 months the product was looking decent but i had come at a place where i was now stuck i wasn't making any more progress on it so i asked a friend who connected me to her uh, saying she's a chef she can help you she's a bakery chef and she i don't know why the goodness of her heart the brilliant person she is she started helping me post work at 10 in the night uh we would be in her kitchen trying new batches trying to move the product towards better stability towards better binding etc and in that process she also got sold on to the mission that you know for the last 15 years she'd been selling sugary cake to the world and she was like i see this as my redemption that i need to do this did this right and she decided to uh, also join in and that also gave me huge confidence that you know protein bar is okay but what about future products and and rachna being there was a huge flip again in the decision and again it was like oh fuck everything seems to be falling in place what's my excuse now <laughs> <laughs> thank you for uh, sharing that story and for all of your candid answers i wanted to ask you how much of your own world view and personality actually went into this brand and i mean how much of a connection is there between you and the brand Hundred percent, man. मतलब there is uh, what what you're seeing is like my voice and the brand's voice are the same. I write the copy. Uh, I do most of the content in terms of what goes on the pack, etc. The copy, etc., is written by me. Uh, and I I frankly don't know how it can be any other uh, any other way uh, because that's the only way to keep it honest in the long term, uh, right? you can't if i'm faking it at some point of time it's going to break at some scaling point it's going to break because how will i scale fakery <laughs> like it's hmm. going to happen right so right. and and the death knell for brands is the brand i see brands as characters uh, and imagine you know some wasepur character suddenly speaking glib english you'll be like what the fuck just happened right like, i right. Don't, don't think this guy is out of character and hence you will lose trust right uh, because the minute someone goes out of character you like something is up i don't know what's up 
right so so if the longevity of a brand is dependent on continuity of character then the only way to stay in character is to have an honest character behind who cannot change because this is who he is <laughs> yeah so it is 100% of me there is no doubt about it makes a lot of sense and like you mentioned you've been making the bars using all natural products so has that reduced the shelf life of the products and did a shorter shelf life build trust amongst the consumers uh, eager to hear thoughts so see to be honest very few people uh, get that that it's smaller you know lower shelf life because it's super fresh and and clean and honestly before i even d2c is great because i can talk to consumers directly but the minute there's a middleman amazon and retailers don't care right they are like if you don't even have 3 months of shelf life then so there will be tons of returns etc all of that stuff so it is tough uh, it is a price we pay for being true to our uh, uh, brand truth and and that's fine the the business way of looking at it is uh i think of it as a cost what's the cost there'll be more returns let's say there'll be 5% returns right is the value of st- staying true to your core belief uh high enough that you can charge actually a 10% premium on your brand if you can then this is fine right because the con- effectively the consumer is saying you are being so truthful i will give you 10 bucks extra and okay 5 bucks will come back in returns that's fine so that's how i look at it from a uh business lens uh, right uh when we make products uh we try and like within the bounds of keeping it 100% honest and natural of course we try and push up shelf life as much as possible through uh, like the biggest okay so how do how do microorganisms grow in food which uh, spoil the food eventually right they need two things they need energy and water any organism needs energy and water right cut out one of these and the growth goes down dramatically right so we try and make products without adding even a drop of water so for example the bars don't have even a drop of water and that takes a lot of work because because water again with sugar in it is a great binder put honey into yeah. anything and it'll you know uh, coagulate and make everything stick together etc uh, and second choose in her- the ingredients inherently need to have very high shelf life so for example almonds cashews dates you can leave them out in the open for a year right and they don't go bad so if the inherent shelf life of ingredients is high the composite will have lower than that but still fairly high shelf life so so we do a lot of research to make sure that you know eventually we need to be running a viable business otherwise we'll go back to just being commentators on the sidelines ki ye galat ho raha hai ye galat ho raha hai but you're not giving people a viable option because people are not going to change their shopping behavior from stores and amazon to coming to your doorstep and buying something fresh right so you need to serve them where they are uh so it's a fine balance but that's how we approach it yeah got it um i want to switch gears a bit and talk a bit about how you have built your team at the whole truth uh you know it would help us if you could uh, explain why you went for the eir structure or uh, for our listeners eir stands for entrepreneur in residence uh something that you, as you mentioned uh was at fasos your previous organization uh why go for such a structure you know as opposed to unilever i i first of all loved Uh, the way jaydeep was building his team even today uh, and it stood the test of time right there were a total of 9 or 10 eirs that he hired earlier and six of them today have been promoted to co-founders the other three are running their own companies etc so uh, a he, he of course he was great at hiring uh, yeah. but he the structure worked so there was already proof that it works but more importantly i think uh, it's very clear to me that you know i have no misconceptions that we are building a tesla or a spacex right and hence we don't need phd scientists uh what i mean by that is i don't think at the stage that we are in our journey since we are not solving some unsolved yet problem by humanity we what we need is uh generalists with very very high intent 
yeah hmm. because the toughness with startups of our kind is not that you will be solving one big problem over two years it's that you will be solving 40 small problems every day and hence right. the quantity of problems that starts making you feel that 24 hours is very less uh, in life and the only way you get over it is not through some preordained skill that you've gained over 20 years of experience it's through intent yeah a b as you grow you want at least I want, and that, by the way, comes from Unilever. It's the same philosophy that I want the leaders in the company to be ingrown. Mm. Uh, yeah, which requires them to have shuffled across roles, have done supply chain for two years, sales for two years, branding for two years, so that when I give them a PNL, let's say four years down the line, we're in three countries. I want one EIR to be heading the PNL of each country, right? Uh, and only if he or she has experience across functions can can they do that, right? So again, from every lens, be it the FASO's experience, the Unilever generalist experience versus say the PNG vertical uh, structure, I've always been in love with the Unilever generalist, keep swapping people every two years for different roles, keeps people's minds fresh, keeps them motivated. So right. again, was a no brainer to me that this is the route I'm going to go down. Sweet, sweet. That's that's very, very interesting. Um, for the listeners, could you very quickly, maybe in 30 seconds, help us understand how do you define an EIR? Like, uh, you know, and maybe if you are looking for more, how should they reach out to you? Uh, definition of EIR, which is entrepreneur in residence, is exactly what the word says, that uh, uh, if you're someone who believes that actually in the future you'd act- want to be a uh, entrepreneur, which is either running your own PNL or running your own company, which is absolutely fine by us. Come here, we'll give you the platform to learn uh, across functions, hopefully building one of India's best brands. And the definition is uh, if doing a different role every two years and doing roles which you on paper aren't qualified to do excites you, then this is the place for you. If it scares you and you think, oh no, I'm a finance guy, I should be doing finance, then please choose a career path where you become a CFO. Yeah, Uh, this is not that. Uh, This leads you to be a PNL owner and always looking for amazing people to hire. So shashank at thewholetruthfoods.com is the email ID. Uh, I can pretend to have some chief of staff or manager. (laughs) Great. So Shishank, you know, some brands uh, call themselves real or preservative free while having loads of sugars and additives. Haven't these brands tarnished the whole concept and made customers feel cheated? How did you manage um, in a situation to win the trust of customers? Actually, I, funnily, I think it's, they've done us a great favor. Like in, in, uh, in VC terms, they left the truth flank open. <laughs> Right? Brands have been lying for so long that consumers approach uh, with distrust. right? And uh, consumers aren't stupid. Uh, they figure it out eventually. You might fool them once or twice, but eventually they figure it out. Problem is, if I don't have an alternative, what am I going to do? right? Uh, but I think once uh, with us, I'm sure they must have approached with distrust. Here's another brand which is saying that it says the truth. But when they got the product in their hand, when they saw, oh, five ingredients up front, let me turn the pack. Oh, still five ingredients at the back. Let me bite into it. Oh, I can taste each and every of the five ingredients that they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, I think imagine uh, imagine them going from minus 10 to plus 10 in one interaction. And what huge trust that would build in a sea of distrust. Right. So uh, I just think the product uh, needs to live up to it. And, and you actually have a great advantage when people approach with, uh, with distrust because it's even getting them to zero is a massive win. <laughs> you know, this uh, actually reminds me uh, of, you know, the first time I tried the, uh, the protein bar. Uh, I remember this is early uh, in my days at Sauce and it was just any other normal day and uh, I remember there was a knock at the cabin and it was your wife, Aditi, who, uh, you know, she had, 
you know, a couple of these samples for us to try out. And, uh, you know, at the time I had absolutely zero expectations. Uh, you know, uh, the first few companies that I was spoke to were protein bars and, uh, you know, I was just a bit concerned that as a, a consumer as a VC, am I just going to be eating protein bars and trying this stuff? Um, and, you know, to add to that, you know, it came in this uh, brown package and, you know, I just had a bad experience and with other protein bars and I just had this perception that uh, healthy food is just going to taste bad. But I remember very uh, distinctly when uh, Manu and I first opened the bar and tried it, uh, you know, we had a first bite and then we looked at each other going like, whoa, <laughs> you know, damn, it tastes really good. And uh, so, you know, for me, uh, with the product, it just became that not only was it uh, healthy, it was also super tasty. And I remember uh, at that time when I was, this was in my notice period in Unilever and I was beating uh, Manu and uh, he used to tell me, Are, yaar, I'm getting pitched by a bar guy every three days. There are too many. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> it's the word. Yeah, man. I think uh, we uh, we underestimate uh, our biology. What I mean by that is, uh, uh, you know, we keep hearing this that uh, our food has evolved in the last 200 years, but our bodies haven't, and our tongue hasn't, and our stomach hasn't, which is absolutely true. And how that plays out is when real food touches your tongue and goes into your tummy, you know. Yeah, uh, it, it just doesn't take too much beyond that to uh, you don't have to theorize, you don't have to think about it, you just know. So you mentioned that eventually you will get into other products. Uh, what are these products going to be? How, how do you find that there's a gap for a particular product? So I'm not going to give you category names. I, I'm going to say that this is top secret, so you can't share. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. Yeah, the whole truth policy applies. <laughs> but once, once it's launched, you know the whole... Uh, but the I can give plan. you the framework with which we approach it. And it's a... Again, calling it a framework is a fancy term. It's very simple here. Uh, it's one of those uh, Venn diagrams of your uh, three circles. If there is a category uh, where consumer of food where consumers are being lied to today, that's one circle. Can we create... Uh, a product that lives up to the whole truth promise, that's two. And three is, is it tasty? If these three circles intersect in any food category, we will enter. So if I'm correct, in the future, you want to release products that will be catering to mass audience. Is that so? Yeah, like inherently, like it will be hard to find a smaller category than protein bars in India. <laughs> so <laughs> by definition, future categories will be larger and larger category means they reach more people. So you're right. Yeah. So uh, Shashank, can you tell me what was the reaction of your family when you told them you wanted to leave your job and make protein bars? Because you literally had a, a stellar career at Unilever and... Uh, you know, a lot more things were promised. So how did they take it? Uh, I think they were... So this has history to it, right? They were shell-shocked when I told them that I'm leaving Unilever to join uh, FASOs, right? And I come from a very, very typical middle-class family. No one in, like, two degrees of separation has ever run a bit. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and when I quit Unilever for the first time, I was, like, performing, like, the chops. Like, I was on a fast track and all of the jazz, right? So, uh, uh, so that time they were really, really shocked. Then they were like, you've gone stupid. What are you doing? All of that stuff. Uh, took a lot of convincing, but eventually they were like, I think I've realized that parents, they might not agree, but they give in. Like they realized, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, and then, for the two years, they saw uh, first year was good, second year was a struggle, then I came back, then they got the satisfaction that we had told them first, and then I think it was uh, a story of two reasons. One is, between 2012 and 2019, there's been a sea shift in understanding and acceptance of startups, right? Yeah. My, uh, the newspaper my parents read talks has front page stories of startups, uh, yeah. of them doing like founders making big bucks etc so it didn't seem like a uh, oh he's out on some quixotic uh, uh, endeavor sort of a thing 
and second i think between then and now i was married and my wife was backing me i think they got uh, comfort from that too uh, so uh, and of course then i gave them the spiel that you know nahi chalega to do teen saal mein i can always come back and get a job right so yeah uh, uh, how does it uh, matter which by the way was one of the big uh, things they took for me to also cross the barrier that uh, you know i had these all sorts of rationalization i spent 6 months finding rationalization arguments of if it all goes down uh, the drain uh, what's the backup and you know i would calculate that so many of my peers in unilever actually had 2 to 3 years of work experience before mba so i'm already 3 years ahead of them so if it goes down after 3 years so what i will still be <laughs> you know in line age wise uh, with them then i had this thing of so when i left this time i was again at the cusp of getting a massive like work level promotion which means salary goes up by 40% and job prospects go up by 100% and all of that stuff so i was like should i wait another 3 4 months get this on my cv and then quit so that if i have to come back i come back at much higher salary yeah so all of this <laughs> i internally went through but when i went to them a they saw the conviction b uh, world had changed c my immediate partner was in line i think all of that made it easier the second time and d the bars were tasty because they had them too yeah that's <laughs> that's true but i don't think parents think first principles parents think first kids yeah. <laughs> and they think kids are out to kill themselves <laughs> Shashank, because some of our listeners will be people looking to start brands. Some of them could be bakers, and um, like you said, Rachna, your partner, right, who's been a baker. What's your advice to hundreds of Rachnas out there? How do they find a niche? How do they start a brand? Uh, first of all, I don't know if everyone wants to or needs to. Like there is, I frankly uh, debated for the longest time whether uh, you know. getting on the vc treadmill and trying to make a large company uh, might set up the wrong incentives and some and you know incentivize me to belie the truth of the brand and all of that stuff right so so first of all there should be absolutely no like whoever to each is or her own but if you do wish to make things large and uh, you know uh, grow a business beyond a certain home business uh, etc i think for product businesses uh you know the first thing to crack is people will not be able to try your product first first your word will get to them then your product will get to them yeah so think about what's the word that you want to get to them yeah which comes back to insight like why should your brand exist what is the gap in the world that you will come and fill right if that answer isn't clear then you might have the best cake or the best protein bar in the world uh, you know i have built it they will come it will not happen yeah so that's my biggest uh, advice that don't uh, let yourself fall into the fallacy that now that i have have a great product which everyone seems to love now why wouldn't it become a 100 crore company tomorrow it wouldn't because your product won't reach people first what you say about it and your brand will reach first and what you say must be relevant and must be insightful for me to give it a year otherwise i will ignore it in the clutter that exists in this world so um shashank have there been any surprises or instances that shocked you during this uh, entrepreneurial journey uh why i ask is because you know i follow you on twitter and i came across uh one of your tweets which is uh quoting this blog uh read by diabetic patients right and uh, a lot about how what sort of nutrition diabetic patients could have um and they had an entire feature on the whole truth so you know uh, i could sense that there was something that you're very happy about and proud of so are there such any more surprises such as that you can share with us many 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 so we there are so many pregnant women who tell us that their nutritionist has told them that this bar is great for them because their protein requirements are higher and their magnesium requirements are higher both uh, and yet you know especially for women who are vegetarian 
how do i go up from like i am not even able to get my 40 grams 50 grams of protein now my dietitian is saying go up to 60 70 how do i do it yeah, yeah. Uh, so they love our bars moms with young kids they like i have now started putting a bar as a tiffin snack and the kid thinks it's a chocolate so he loves it uh, i am happy that he's getting something nutritious uh, and not having junk yeah so people with elders at home uh, really like our bars uh, uh, you know for their parents because they are not at home most of the time they are always out uh, and if the parents need a sweet snack and mo- in half the cases one of the parents is going to be diabetic yeah right. so so tons of use cases that uh, that popped up that we never optimized for and it again goes back to i think this first principle things the more le- you know more said about it the less ki ki if you've just made real food it will appeal to a broad range of human beings who need real right. food yeah so uh, we might call them use cases etc but it's just human beings liking real food so in a way as you said that no one likes to be lied across age groups demographics the same way when the food is good it's good for everyone yeah exactly correct one last question to you shashank what's your favorite brand except for the whole truth i have two favorites in the food space and especially because i am a lover of copy i think copy before i think design uh, i love innocent uh, if you've seen what they do and have been doing for like years and years and years uh, i am just in love like they make me laugh with every piece of communication they put out and uh, and it's so on brand and the products are great i love innocent and uh, and the other one is uh, uh, nike uh, and of course nike and apple are off quoted examples so uh, guilty as charged love them both too uh, nike specifically because uh, how to shift the conversation away from just a shoe uh, and even today i don't think uh, apart from a handful of marketers anyone will be able to tell you what is it that they do and in one word for me it's inspiration uh, look at the videos that they make yeah. like at the end of every video i am like i am going to go and rule the world <laughs> fuck this that why can't i do that right <laughs> and and i'm like what 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 did they do to to get me so charged right and and that's just and to keep as a marketer i'm in awe of how they keep doing it repeatedly as a process again and again and again and again uh just in love with uh, like they are at a next level thank you shashank for joining us today it was such a pleasure to host you we learned a lot and i'm sure so did our listeners to our listeners if you like this episode please do share it with others to learn more about consumer brands and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast we would absolutely love to hear your feedback and views uh, you can tweet it out to us on our handle which is at the rate kcap_in see you next week with our next episode cheers mm-hmm.